Happy Tuesday. Come on in, pull up a chair. The Daily Dope is in the air. Howdy, 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 gang. Yes, I'm Jeff Macklear, back once again as your host here at The Daily Dope, presented by TheGamingGang.com. Welcome aboard. It is a casual evening tonight. It is Tuesday, July 9th. This is episode 329 of The Daily Dope. Tonight, I am going to be unboxing and taking a first look at Aeon's End, which is a cooperative fantasy deck building game. It is from Action Phase Games, as well as Indie Boards and Cards. I'd always heard uh, some pretty good things about this as well. So uh, quickly here, allow me to pop over here. I am using the chat on YouTube now because it appears that the chat client I have been using, and I didn't have any time to, to see about maybe a replacement program, um, just it isn't working right. It's it's not showing when people are in chat. So, and, uh, and then sometimes it does show the conversations going on, and then it just drops off. So it's kind of like, okay, so nobody said anything for, you know, 10 minutes, 30 minutes sometimes, so. I am actually hanging out uh, on YouTube. I have a browser window open, so I do see that the madman is hanging out in chat already. Good deal. So I uh, got some fun on the horizon on tonight's show. As I mentioned, I will be taking a first look at Aeon's End. I do have some tabletop gaming news as well. Do you want to point out that because this is a live stream, as I've been talking about chat, chat is available on youtube it is not on screen so it's one of the ways that i keep some of the stranger commenters at bay but i do pay attention to chat so if you'd like to say hello like the madman has and x sola x1 who i'm just going to refer to as x1 <laughs> so uh is saying hello as well so if you want to say howdy say howdy if you got a question fire away with a question and if there happens to be something about Aeon's End that you'd like to get a little closer look at, by all means, chime in and I will respond. So if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you check out some of the videos on the Gaming Gang channel and you dig those, by all means, please subscribe. And if you do subscribe, don't forget, ring that little bell because not only will that notify you when a new video has been uploaded, to the channel, it'll also tell you when the stream goes live. Within about five minutes or so is what I have been told. And of course, if you like the website, if you like the channel, if you like this show, please tell a friend. In fact, tell two friends. And right now, it's probably pretty important that you subscribe and tell some friends because I have a pretty cool giveaway going on. I'm in the midst of it. I say I see flaming herons popping in. Uh, so yes, flaming heron. I should point out, I'm hanging out on YouTube. So this, unless suddenly YouTube starts to uh, like hide the chat, I will be able to see the chat. Anyway, contest I've got going on. I am giving away a copy of the Pathfinder Adventure Card Game Core Set. I actually have a review coming up on Friday of this, but I will uh, talk about that when I get into the whole uh, what's coming up on the show a little later on. So I've got the core set. I have the first expansion. Oh yeah, Throne of the, uh, Curse of the Crimson Throne, I should say. This has like 550 cards for this adventure path. So that's part of the giveaway. And I even have, <laughs> I've got some promo cards. The first set of promo cards for the new edition of the Pathfinder Adventure card game. So here's how you can win. 
Number one, be a subscriber. Pretty simple. Number two, comment on a video on the Gaming Gang channel. It doesn't matter what video you comment on. I prefer you don't comment on the contest video because that's kind of odd. That's a little too, you know, like, oh, I can't be, I can't bother to check out any other videos on your channel except for the contest. <laughs> win win. Hey, I mean, not that I'm going to be like, oh, you commented on the, on the contest video, you can't win. But I mean, it makes sense to try to comment on something else. Anyway, so I have to hit 1,600 subscribers by August 5th, and I will give one copy of that prize package out. You do have to be in the U.S. or Canada, or specifically tell me in a comment if you're outside the U.S. that you'll pay for the shipping, because I'm on the hook for the shipping for these, these contest items. So if I get to 1,600 subscribers, which is about 109 away right now, I will give one copy of that prize package out. If I hit 1,800 subscribers by August 5th, I will give two copies of that. And if I hit 2,000 subscribers by August 5th, three copies of that prize pack are going out. So that's why I keep telling people, if you share you know, the, the channel with friends, and ask them to subscribe, it actually improves your chances of winning. So rather than having one in 1,600, which we know it won't be 1,600 because there won't be 1,600 comments, but let's say one in 300 might end up becoming three in 300. So much, much better odds. So, uh, so does uh, chat count as comments? No, <laughs> the chat has to be on a saved video, on a rendered video. Uh, so Fleming Heron says, tell me about shipping costs, paying for something from the UK and costing as much as the item. I know, that's why I can only do US and Canada, unless an international winner wants to take care of the shipping cost. Even shipping to Canada is pricey and weird. I don't know why. All right, so we got a good chat going on right now. Uh, and I do see Dan from No Enemies here has arrived as well. So I've got news tonight. And before I jump into the news, I do want to mention something. Uh, somebody had commented on my news piece about Gaslands Refueled, which is coming from Osprey Games. I talked about it last night on the show. And the way it was presented by distribution is that it's an expansion to Gaslands, which is kind of a Car Wars-esque uh, post-apocalyptic vehicular combat miniatures game. As I like to say, which of course Osprey can't say this, but I can say this, uh, the original edition is like Car Wars miniatures. So seeing that we haven't gotten anything from Steve Jackson Games and uh, they soaked people for extra money for the Ogre Kickstarter, uh, and we've never seen the new Car Wars, this is pretty much the next best thing. So distribution made it sound like this was an expansion. Didn't say it was a brand new edition. And on the show last night, I had mentioned, I don't know, maybe this is a new edition because it's a hardcover book. The other one was soft cover. So anyway, like I said, distribution makes it sound like this is an expansion. So that's what I had in my news piece that I put up on the gaminggang.com. Somebody comments and says, you know, I was under the understanding that uh, this is uh, this is a standalone new edition. And uh, then they posted another comment like seconds later saying, you've lost a follower. I, I don't make the news up. I can only take the news that's given to me and present it to people. It's like I don't rewrite, pe uh, you know, companies sell sheet infos or press releases or anything like that. ICV2 does that, and that pisses a lot of companies off. So I present exactly what their sell sheet info or press release info is. Uh, so it's like, sorry, <laughs> what am I supposed to tell you? It's like, that's the info that was given to me. If it's incorrect, I can't help you. So I'm just, I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it from some people out there. It's sort of like they're part of this hobby, which is great and a lot of fun. And it's like, they seem to have like a permanent stick up their ass. <laughs> so it's like, thank God I don't have to play with these people at my table. Anyway, still talking about the news. 
There's some folks out there who don't like the tabletop gaming news on every show. So if you fall into that category and you are not watching live, by all means, check out the show notes below. Those are usually done about an hour after the stream uh, ends. And uh, of course, you can skip right on past. Don't have tons of news, but I got a, a good amount of news. So, my friends over at Stronghold Games are going to be releasing a new edition of the trick-taking game Diamonds this fall. And here's the dope. Diamonds is a, as I just told you, trick-taking game <laughs> in which players collect diamonds. Not cards bearing that suit, mind you, but rather actual diamond acrylic crystals included in the game. What makes the game of diamonds different from other trick-taking card games is that when you cannot follow suit, you get a suit action based on what suit you do play. Suit actions are also taken by the winner of each trick, as well as at the end of a full round of play. Suit actions will enable players to take diamond crystals from the supply, moving them to their showroom, where they may score one point, or to their vault. Wow, why did my voice go so high right there? Vault! <laughs> Where they score two points. The vault is a secure area, but the showroom is vulnerable to theft by the other players. Whoever has the most points in Diamond Crystals at the end of the game wins. There is a uh, little mini expansion with this too, which is the Thief. Diamonds is for two to six players, age eight and up, plays in around 30 minutes and will carry an MSRP of $24.95 when it arrives this September. So, uh, so <laughs> Flaming Heroes, like, you just can't win with some people. I know, it's just the weirdest thing. It's sort of like, you know, just, can't you be happy that I'm actually even sharing the news about this thing? Eh, what can I tell you? Anyway, Ah, that's good. That's good. It's, uh, strangely enough, it's very dry in the duct tape studios today, although it's kind of humid outside. So I don't, I don't get it. Anyway, I was going to say that uh, the first edition of Diamonds I played and I reviewed for Stronghold Games, and I will be the first to admit I am not a huge fan of trick-taking games. A lot of them just seem to play the same to me. Uh, just, you know, that's a mechanic that just, to me, it's just not really getting my juices flowing, right? But I have to admit, I really like Diamonds. I thought there was enough different to the gameplay that made it stand out. So it's kind of cool to see that there is a second edition on the horizon. So do you want to point out that Cosmos Games will be releasing a new fantasy board game at Gen Con? And I've got the dope on Roll for Adventure. Or as I like to keep saying, Roll for Adventure! The Old Kingdom is in danger. Enemy armies are attacking from all directions, thanks to the Dark Lord. Damn you, Dark Lord. Who seeks to bring eternal darkness, thus he's the Dark Lord, right? Across the land. The only chance the players have in Roll for Adventure is the band forces to collect the fabled power stones to complete the magical amulet. If they succeed, they'll save the empire and win the game. However, should even one area fall under the control of the Dark Lord, the players lose the game immediately. Each player receives a set of dice and a hero character with special abilities. Then players work together to protect the four realms from the Master of Shadows and his minions. Use the results of your dice roll and your hero ability to complete challenges in the four realms. Once all the challenges in a specific realm are complete, you gain a power stone. An infinity stone? What? Oh, sorry, power stone. Collect enough power stones and declare victory over the Master of Shadows. Roll for Adventure is for two to four players, ages 10 and up, plays in around 30 minutes, and will carry an MSRP of $34.95 when it arrives on August 1st at both Gen Con and at your friendly local game stores. I gotta say, this kind of piqued my interest a little bit. It's not a huge game. Looks like it's got a pretty small footprint. 
probably has quite a few cards. But there are three games that are actually arriving at Gen Con from Cosmos that look pretty interesting. One is Roll for Adventure. The other is uh, Imhotep the Duel, which I believe is specifically for two players. Uh, when I did my interview with Thomas over at, uh, well, it's, I guess it's, it's officially Cosmos Games. Because uh, it's, you know, it's like Thames and Cosmos, but Thames is more like puzzles and science stuff. But uh, anyway, uh, we talked a little bit about that. I shot a little bit of B-roll because they had a demo of it out there. And then there's also Tribes, which looks interesting as well. So uh, this could be very cool as a you know, quick quick kind of fantasy game. Get a few people just chucking some dice and uh, beating up on the Dark Lord. Moving right along, Stoneblade Entertainment and Ultra Pro have a new expansion coming soon for Shards of Infinity. And here's the dope on Shadow of Salvation. Interesting name, I must, I must admit. Interesting title there. The fate of the world is in your hands. Yes, your hands. In Shards of Infinity, Shadow of Salvation, the third installment of the award-winning deck-building game, players can choose one of two modes to play. Play a classic game of shards using the hero Rez's new relics and allies to take down your opponents in player versus player battles, or heed the warning of the time-traveling Rez and play cooperatively in a new campaign mode to battle through a series of bosses with up to four of your friends. In cooperative mode, you read from the innovative battle book, which tells a branching story. As a time-traveling res, you must decide which threat to take on with your team. Every choice has a consequence, as does your success or failure against these growing threats. The newest expansion of this game, Shards of Infinity, Shadow of Salvation, adds 118 cards, a new hero dial counter, a new faction with new mechanics, and a brand new campaign mode that allows for cooperative play. Get ready for a deck building strategy card game in which each player competes to either knock out all other opponents or collect all these shard fragments. Enjoy a cooperative branching campaign mode to play with your friends in multiple boss battles. Shards of Infinity Shadows of Salvation is for two to four players, ages 10 and up, plays in around a half hour, and this expansion will carry an MSRP of $20 when it arrives this September. This is an expansion, so you do need to have Shards of Infinity to actually play the game. I have to point out, I think this is pretty interesting. I like the fact that... Uh, they're throwing in a cooperative aspect to the game. There are not a whole lot of cooperative deck building games out there. We're taking a look at one of them tonight. <laughs> so, so you've got that. And I reviewed Shards of Infinity. And uh, I thought that was, uh, I thought it was a pretty interesting game. I liked it. I'll be very honest. I liked it more than I was expecting to like it. So, if you uh, want to learn more about Shards of Infinity, by all means, check out my review. It's a review video. And um, we will see if we find out more about this expansion when it arrives. Talking about expansions and Osprey Games, and no one can argue with me today that this is not an expansion because there is a new expansion for Last Day's Zombie Apocalypse, the miniatures system. It's coming in September, and I've got the dope on Seasons. Last Day's Zombie Apocalypse Seasons, it's kind of a long title there, features an all-new campaign designed to take players through 12 months games of gameplay focusing on the changing seasons and the new challenges this brings for survivors. The book includes new problems for your group to face, including hunger, thirst, and warmth, as well as a whole host of new character types scavenge tables, yeah, get that scavenge, everybody, scenarios, and even rules for bicycles and motorbikes. That's right, we're all going to survive the zombie apocalypse because we all have our bikes. We're kids on bikes. Last Day's Zombie Apocalypse is a skirmish-scale miniatures game of survival horror, 
It pits players against each other in a nightmarish near future where the dead have returned to life and are feasting on the living. It's normally how zombies operate. Players build their own factions, representing desperate civilians, military personnel, or hardened survivors, and must explore, scavenge, and fight in order to survive another day. Rival gangs are only one of the dangers they face. Mindless zombies wander the streets, driven by insatiable hunger and drawn by the sound of combat. A gang's ability to scavenge is as vital as their combat ability, and players must ensure that they have the resources to survive in this hostile world. Scenarios and campaigns allow you to develop your gang, gain experience, and recruit new henchmen to build up your strength or replace the inevitable casualties of the zombie apocalypse. This hardcore expansion is going to arrive on September 19th, so look for last day's zombie apocalypse seasons and it will carry an MSRP of $30. So as I pointed out, um, this is an expansion, so you do need the core book. And I had heard some good things and some less than great things about this uh, this system. And Ash Barker is is pretty well known for uh, like skirmish game design. So I had heard that uh, there's a lot of good stuff in the core book, but the zombies are actually kind of wimpy. And I guess the uh, the ranged weapons are really overpowered. So uh, the zombies don't really offer that much of a threat. So I'm kind of curious if uh, the lethalness, I guess we'll say, of the zombies has been increased in this expansion. Because, like I said, there were... Because uh, I had kind of looked into maybe reviewing this, and uh, I was like, yeah, well, I'm hearing like up in the air things. I'm hearing it's kind of meh. So I was like, yeah, I won't ask for a review copy. <laughs> so, but anyway, this uh, this could be kind of cool. And it is a hardcover. It is not a soft cover book for this release. So my final news piece, I always like to save people money. And of course, I always like to talk about role-playing games. So there is a new Gallant Night Games bundle of holding and who do you think's got the dope? I do. Adventurer! This tiny dungeon bundle presents the stripped down and streamlined tiny D6 universal tabletop role-playing rules from Gallant Knight Games. Funded in a September 2017 Kickstarter campaign, the tiny dungeon RPG, now keep in mind, this is second edition, uses the minimalist tiny D6 mechanics for a fast-playing fantasy game that's easy to learn and teach and ideal for convention games, one-shots, and novice role players. Player characters, heroic adventurers, daring treasure hunters, <laughs> imperious magicians, and more, have statistics that fit on a 3x5 note card. No joke, they really do fit on a 3x5 note card, and the monsters actually could be on an even smaller piece of paper than that. Design and, excuse me, I should say designer, Alan Barr, has adapted the Tiny D6 rules for standalone games in other genres. This bargain-priced offer gives you PDF ebooks of the current editions of Tiny Dungeon, Tiny Wastelands, Tiny Frontiers, and Tiny Mecha. Uh, although that's about giant robots, not tiny ones. Along with a tiny boatload of freebies. For just $9.95, you get all five titles in the Dungeon Collection, with a retail value of $37, including the complete Tiny Dungeon 2nd Edition Core Rulebook, plus its free Quick Start set, Mad Magics of the Turned God and Quick Start Characters, the Tiny Dungeon Player's Guide, the Print and Cut Bestiary Deck and Treasure Deck, and the GM Screen. If you pay more than the threshold price of $2071, kind of an odd total there, You'll level up and also get our entire universe collection with seven more minimalist Tiny D6 titles worth an additional $61, including the standalone RPG of streamlined post-apocalyptic action, Tiny Wastelands Revised Edition, plus its Enclave deck and GM screen, the Space Opera Tiny Frontiers Revised Edition, plus its rules expansion, the Tiny Frontiers Sourcebook Mecha and Monsters, 
plus it's mecha and monsters pre-gen cards. And for summer season, lifeguarding action and Baywatch and glamour. Yes, it's Beach Patrol, plus it's free set of quick start characters. If you just didn't get enough of Baywatch, you can roleplay it now. Do you want to point out 10% of your payment after payment gateway fees will be donated to Doctors Without Borders. And this offer is available for the next two weeks. So do want to mention that uh, I reviewed Tiny Dungeon, the second edition, way back. It was one of the first of the uh, episodes of the Daily Dope. In fact, I was reviewing a PDF of it. And it's a lot of fun. I thought it was really well done. And it is an excellent jumping on point for people who just, you know, don't have a lot of experience with role playing games or kids or people who just want to bang out some uh, some role playing fun ASAP rather quickly. So I don't know. There's like a piece of fuzz blown around. It might be might be Pinky here. Pinky's down here snoozing. Smokey's upstairs. Pinky's down here. Keep our fingers crossed that we don't hear from Pinky tonight because you know how she likes to jump in and caterwaul. So, all right. So the man man says, uh, hanging out, just enjoying a little downtime. Good deal. All right. So I should point out what's coming up on the show this week and into next. So I did talk about last night that next week I will be covering the San Diego Comic-Con So I will be out in San Diego. So I'm only going to have a show probably only Monday. But on tomorrow's show, it's War Game Wednesday. So I will be unboxing and taking a first look at 1754 Conquest, the French and Indian War from Academy Games. I am uh, a big fan of 1812, the uh, invasion of Canada which I want to say, I think that was the first of the Birth of America series that came from Academy Games. So I've got 1754. We are going to take a look at this. Plus, we're also going to take a peek at the special Native American expansion, which allows uh, the players to utilize the Native Americans as a faction, as opposed to uh, kind of a um, a fickle non-player faction, I guess we'll say. So then on Thursday, I love talking about role-playing games on Thursdays. I will be reviewing the D&D Essentials set from Wizards of the Coast. Right now, this is actually a Target exclusive. And I believe that's uh, through like the first few days of September. So uh, really nice price on this. Really, really nice uh, books as well. I know I'm kind of giving things away, but uh, it's going to get a good score. I'm going to tell you that right now. And uh, I will explain exactly why in my review. Then on Friday, another review. That's right. Yep. I'll be reviewing the Pathfinder Adventure card game core set, which uh, we played a lot of this over the uh, four day weekend. So I will have my review of this. And of course, if you were tuning in late, I did talk about how you can win yourself a copy of the core set, the Curse of the Crimson Throne expansion, as well as some promo cards. If you are a subscriber and commenter, and if I can get to 1,600 subscribers, that's when it all starts. All the goodness starts to flow. Let the spice flow. Then on Monday's show, I will be reviewing Robotech Attack on the SDF-1 from Japanime Games. So that will be coming up on Monday's show. I do have some standalone videos that I am going to be posting out there uh, from time to time. I am going to actually do my best to have some videos that will be already uploaded to YouTube and I will just publish them when I'm out in San Diego so that uh, I got a little gaming goodness going on while I am gone. So, before I jump into my unboxing of Aeon's End, let me point out, once again, it is that time to remind folks that if you like thegaminggang.com, if you enjoy the Gaming Gang channel here on YouTube, if you kind of dig the Daily Dope, keep in mind that this is pretty much a not-for-profit endeavor. So, if you like the site, if you like the channel, if you like the show, please consider 
making a small donation to Lil Bub's Big Fund and the American Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. That's right, Lil Bub's Big Fund does provide grant monies to organizations throughout the United States who care for special needs animals who are awaiting adoption. So these animals might uh, just be a little bit older or they might be blind or deaf or require medication on a daily basis. They might have some mobility issues. So regardless, these animals do deserve a chance at finding their forever homes. And as someone who has adopted shelter pets in the past, in fact, for the past few decades, I only adopt shelter pets. Uh, I can tell you right, right up front that whatever love you give them is going to be pretty much paid back tenfold. Do you want to mention Lil Bub is actually not... Okay, Lil Bub's under the weather. So Lil Bub had some sort of like bone infection a few months ago. And she was on these antibiotics in that. And um, she uh, she actually kicked it. But I guess the bone infection is back. I just heard this the other day. Uh, so it's like, oh no. Because Lil Bub has like a multitude of challenges that she has overcome in her eight years on our planet. So uh, yeah, I was kind of bummed to uh, to see that uh, Lil Bub is sick. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed for uh, Lil Bub. And if you ever want to learn more about Lil Bub, you can go to lilbub.com. Pretty fascinating story. So Dan's got to rock and roll. So Dan from No Enemies here. Hey, once again, uh, thanks for posting my video, uh, my preview video on your show, No Enemies, here last Saturday. Uh, I won't send you a video for next week because it'd be silly to say, yeah, come by on Monday. Check out Robotech. <laughs> anyway, I'll see you uh, probably tomorrow night, no doubt. So, anywho, let's jump on into the unboxing because I'm sure people are tuning in because they want to check out Aeon's End from Action Phase Games and Indie Boards and Cards. Game is designed by Kevin Riley, with artwork and graphic design provided by Gong Studios. It might be, yeah, I think it is pronounced Gong. Uh, and Scott Hartman. The game is for one to four players, so it's cool. It's got some solitaire suitability to it. It's for ages 14 and up, plays in about 60 minutes, and does carry an MSRP of $49.99. This is the core set. This is the second edition of the game as well. And let's move on over to the other camera. So I do believe, uh, I believe Aeon's End came out in like 2016 and did pretty well. So obviously enough right there, it says it's second edition. Obviously enough that uh, it did well enough for them to do a second edition. There are some various uh, expansions out there that I have shared news for. Uh, I want to say... There's, I think it might be a standalone expansion and it's Aeon's End uh, Legends, I think it is. And it's kind of a, it's like a bigger, like black box. So uh, we will read a little bit of the uh, text on the back. It says Aeon's End is a cooperative deck building game where your deck is never shuffled. A variable player order simulates the chaos of battle and deck management makes all your decisions meaningful. Every game, you will face a different nemesis, each with a unique set of abilities requiring a different strategy to be defeated. Uh-huh. Oh, uh, X1. Yes, Legacy. Thank you. Thank you, X1, for pointing that. Yeah, I was trying to remember. Was it Legend? But you are correct. It is Legacy. So, uh, the box has a, a decent amount of heft to it. Let's see what we got inside here. I'm going to grab a, another quick sip. All right, so we've got a rule book. Looks like, uh, stop before opening any of the decks. We'll take a look at that. So first off, let's, uh, let's take a peek at the rule book here. And <laughs> this isn't the end of the world. That already happened. Oh, that's nice. Nice. Object of the game, so uh, it says each round the players and the nemesis will take turns in a random order. 
During a player's turn, they'll be able to cast spells, acquire additional gems, relics, and spells from the supply, manipulate their spell casting breaches, and use their unique abilities. So is, is each player basically a, uh, a spell caster, a magic user? Kind of curious. So it's telling us uh, all the components, all the contents. So telling us the anatomy. This looks like that's a character card here. Uh, breaches. Okay, so I, I'm taking a guess we're trying to close these breaches. Showing the player cards. Randomizer cards, okay. A nemesis mat that will lay out. So here are the nemesis cards. I like the artwork so far. I think the artwork looks pretty cool. Okay, then we get some setup. So we've got images throughout. We've got some examples here. So that's cool. Kind of walking us through everything. So these little blue sidebars are just giving us examples. So this is, uh, is this kind of point, uh, kind of walking us through almost. Yeah, maybe. I'll have to take a peek through. So, cause it's showing uh, player turn three, player turn one. So it's it's kind of uh, the way it's presented. I I wouldn't have put player turn. Uh, it almost threw you off. Like it's like okay, so player one is doing this. It's like what? <laughs> so it's basically just telling us okay. So this is the turn order as far as the player turn. So I would have just had player turn casting phase, player turn main phase, player turn draw phase. I don't I don't think you need really the number there. No big deal. I just it threw me off for a second. I'm like, what? Huh? Then again, it's probably just because I'm a dope. So there is a reason. <laughs> There's multiple reasons why this show is called the Daily Dope. So so talking about uh, various aspects ex being exhausted. So if uh, you're the player's life is reduced to zero. The player is exhausted. So uh, I wonder. You might not necessarily be knocked right out of the game. We got uh, game end. We got a little information about solitaire play and uh, Nemesis deck construction. Okay. So all in all, twenty pages of rules, but loads and loads of illustrations and examples. So, reality, you're probably looking at 10 pages of text, if even that. All right, so, got the rules. So then we get this, stop! Before you go any further, I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. Because we're going to start looking at cards and that. Uh, it says, before opening any of the decks, please read this sheet. It'll walk you through how to set up Anzen for your first playthrough. It's not meant to teach you the game. All right, well, it wouldn't be much of an unboxing if I stop <laughs> and not open the decks. So uh, I will have to uh, refer to this later on. So that is kind of a quick start. Well, I don't want to say quick start guide. Just kind of telling you how to set up for your first game. All right, so uh, I believe this is kind of like player order tokens. Obviously, I'm... Taking a guess, these are wounds. One point of damage, five points of damage. Looks like this is, uh, we've got some minion tokens here. Flip that on over. So these are dual sided. So we've got a little different image here as well. We've got uh, almost like a demon kind of creature on this side. And then almost like, a, like an insect looking creature on this side as well. So. We got the one punch board with tokens. So we've got that. We've got uh, character boards. Looks like we've got some health dials as well. Looks like we've got two. Looks like we've got some. Uh, these are the randomizer cards or separators. Okay, so we've got some baggies for those tokens we're going to be punching out. Got a, a deck of tiles almost. Let's see what this is here. It had this little band around it. Looks like the band kind of fell off it. 
Oh, so we've got different... These are open breaches. So maybe these are like level one, two, three, four. Yeah, so has another effect, like it's adding damage on the threes. Damage plus one damage on cast is what it's saying there. All right, so making sure there's nothing else there. Got a bunch of cards. We've got like five decks of cards. Six decks, I'm sorry. Got six decks. We'll take a look at these. Stop! Don't shuffle this deck! So here we've got the characters. So we've got each of the characters. Got a, quite a few of these. Oh, I think these are the nemesis. The nemeses. The monsters. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Cool! I appreciate that. I like when we have extra characters that we can choose from in a game. So this is for one to four players. A lot of companies would have just been like, okay, well, here's four characters for you. And you guys just pick whoever you want. At least here we're getting some, some choices here. Although I'm not sure what this little stop uh, symbol is up there. So we've got Phaedrex, who is a breach mage seer. And on the back, we get uh, full artwork and a bit of flavor text about the character. Zaxos. Kader or Kadir. So these are all uh, kind of like mages. These first four. So it's like Breach Mage, Delver, Breach Mage, Scout, Adept, Seer. But then... It says Dagger Captain for Mist. <laughs> Breach Mage Orphan. Breach Mage Weaponsmith. And Breach Mage Elder. Okay, so those are the eight characters there. Then we've got the baddies. So this says Husk Track. Oh, that's what these were. These are husks, because I can see they've got the symbols right there. So we've got a husk track for the carapace queen. So it is some sort of like an insect creature. So we've got the prince of gluttons. And we get some, some text about the prince of gluttons. Here is the carapace queen that we had the, uh, the husk tokens for. Crooked Mask. And Rageborn, which has these tokens here. So, so all in all, we get four big bads to tackle as well. So we've got these. Uh, nice... Nice stock, nice card stock. These, it's not like wow, 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 where it's uh, just a, a little thicker than paper. So uh, these should hold up pretty well. And these are also nice stock. It, they're not super thick, but uh, they will hold up to repeated play. They're not like really thin. All right, so we've got those. Uh, We've got the separators, the randomizers, I guess we can say, too. Well, no, these are separators. We should have another deck of randomizers. We'll find out. Because lately it's weird. I've seen um, I've seen some deck building games where the uh, the randomizers are also the separators. And it's like, well, OK, so but you you have to pull everything out of your box to use them. All right, so now we're going to get into some cards. So I will zoom in a little bit closer here. Prince of Gluttons, Crooked Mask, Carapace Queen, The Rageborn, Basic Nemesis, Randomizers. Okay, so we will have Randomizers. That's cool. That's cool. Turn Order, Starter, Spells, Relics, Gems. So these are the Separators. Got those, so that's cool. 
And then we've got uh, the various different decks of cards. So I will not <laughs> shuffle them. I will tell you that right now. Okay, so we've got some different backs. So these two are separate backs. Okay, these have the card on both sides saying stop. Okay, so we'll take a look at these first and I will not shuffle them up, I promise. Because then the game's ruined, ruined, I say. Uh, Mad Men says, I like the art so far. Yeah, I, I, uh, I like it as well. It's, uh, it's clean. It is, uh, it's a, it's kind of bright too, amazingly enough, even though you're fighting these, uh, these baddies. So. Let's all have this same backing like so. So let's flip these on over, just taking a look. So these are gems. So we've got Jade, Riswood Amber, or Riswood Amber, Focusing Orb, so that looks like these are spells here, Mage's Talisman, Spectral Echo, Essence Theft, Planar Insights, and Wildfire Whip. Okay, so I will put these back on top and on the bottom. Okay, so let's take a look at B. I'm taking a wild stab that this backing here is probably for the for the villains, for the nemesis. Okay. So here we've got uh Amethyst Shard, Crystal, Spark, more Crystals, Buried Light, and as you can see, the uh, characters are in being featured in the artwork. Moonstone Shard, all these Crystals, Garnet Shard, So these are the these cards here I believe are indicating the player order. One, two, three, four. Get wild. The nemesis. Player turn. Oh, so we get uh get four pretty much player aid cards. That's cool. Alright. Then we've got this here. It's another deck that we're not supposed to shuffle. So there's three of them. Ah, and this looks like, uh, okay, so it says strike deck. So there are a few cards that say strike deck on them. Okay. And it does look like this might be like uh, the, mon the monsters, the nemesis is actions. Obliterate, reality rupture, rolling death. Gather Darkness, Onslaught. So these are different attacks. Oh, now we get some minions. Avatar of Wrath. So we've got some things that are attacks. We've got some that are uh, minion creatures that'll come out. I'm going to take a guess that maybe that takes 14 hits to kill the Jagged One. Scorn. Cauterizer. <laughs> Venomite. Vegemite, isn't that uh, isn't that what they make for uh, put on sandwiches down in Australia? Wish there was some artwork on these attack cards, but that's okay. Uh, so Kabuki Kid has popped in. Hey, all right. So Kabuki says, I like Aeon Zen. Only played it once, but it was good different kind of deck builder because you don't shuffle your deck, right? Okay. Yeah, Vegemite. Mad Mad's like, yeah, Vegemite. Okay, so. Different attacks, different minions. Agony Field. Oh, no. Haze Spewer. 
And we got some more strikes here. Uh, I think the strikes are just for that one, one minion, or not minion, uh, one nemesis right there. Okay, so I will not shuffle this deck either. So what I will do is to make sure that that does not happen, I will make sure to place these into the box because we do have a little bit of storage. Uh, get a little bit of a storage solution here. It's kind of showing that off a little bit. I'm not going to zoom out to show it to you. You'll see it when I wrap up. So, okay, so now we've got these other decks that there was no indication that we can't shuffle them up. So I believe uh, we've got more cards for characters. And then we'll have uh, another fairly large deck for what appears to be the Nemesis. Although it looks like this might be a card for the for the player character, so this might only be part of a deck. Let's see what we've got. Yep, there we go. So we've actually got four of the Nemesis. And then it looks like these are probably all for the players. So we'll just kind of kind of quickly look at some of these. Amplify Vision, Arcane Nexus, Chaos Arc, Consuming Void, Dark Fire, Feral Lighting. That's kind of an interesting title for that. Uh, Kabuki Kids like makes me makes me think of Men at Work. Yep, that's exactly what it was supposed to make you think of, about. <clears throat> I heard I heard Vegemite tastes terrible, but I don't know. I I've never had it. Lava tendril, Oblivion swell, Phoenix flame. So those are the cards that are there. So we got here: Emerald shard, Quartz shard. Tourmaline Shard. So it looks like these are like kind of more uh, rare gems, maybe? Because it's only one of each. Then we go more crystals, more sparks. Uh, Burning Opal. I don't think we saw that one before. So we've got quite a few of those. Clouded Sapphire. Searing Ruby, we've seen. Sifter's Pearl. Blasting Staff. So these are relics now. Bottled Vortex. Flexing Dagger. Unstable Prism. And Amplify Vision, so another spell. And what do we got here? There we go. More monster cards, or nemesis cards. So Burning Opal. So we, these are more of these, uh, more of the gems. Oh, these are the randomizers right there. My finger was kind of covering it up. So these are all the randomizer cards. Cool. Nice. So put those in there. And then we got more of the monster cards. So we've got more powers, more minions. Speaking of uh, these uh, nasty looking creatures, I finally had an opportunity to sit down and start watching the third season of Stranger Things last night. And uh, I have already cranked through. I only have two episodes left. So I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I was up fairly late and then I watched a couple episodes today. So uh, that's kind of a creepy looking monster there. Bedlam Sage, Ruin Priest. So then we've got Corruption. Huh. So I'm taking a guess maybe these Corruption cards uh, start having negative effects on areas of the board, maybe having negative effects on uh, the player characters as well. Uh, so uh, Flaming Heron says, doesn't help when I see people eat Vegemite by the spoonful. 
but it's not everybody's cup of tea. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thought biter, God feeders, mind guzzler, nothing like a sucking down some mind. I like guzzling down mind. Memory eater, a vile feast. All right, sweet. So we've got these six different decks of cards. Let's uh, kind of zoom back out. So we've got the six different decks of cards. We have the uh, different breach tiles, which I'm actually going to try to slide into here. We've got the two different damage trackers. So I'm taking a guess we, we probably have a collective damage tracker for the player characters and then for the nemesis we've got this one here we've got a bunch of baggies for our token punch board and we also have eight different characters so we got the different character boards here so we've got these we've got the four different nemeses to fight and then we have a special track for one of them which is kind of the insect uh nemesis so we got those we've got the punch board we've got the stop don't open the decks of cards you fool yes i know what can i tell you it's not much of an unboxing if i don't open up the decks then we've got the 20 page Rule book, and that is what we find when we take everything from Anne's End outside the box. Of course, I will have a review of Anne's End in the very near future. I have to say that uh, my nephew Cameron and the rest of uh, his friends who are like honorary members of the gang. Uh, they all did really dig deck building games. So, and this uh, this is supposed to be pretty unique. So, as I mentioned before. Aeon's End is available right now. It is for one to four players, ages 14 and up, and plays in about 60 minutes. It does carry an MSRP of $49.99. So that is it for tonight's show. On tomorrow's show, it's War Game Wednesday. I will be unboxing and taking a first look at 1754 Conquest, the French and Indian War from academy games we'll even take a peek at the little expansion native american deck as well so as i like to point out when you're not watching videos on the gaming gang channel be sure to visit the gaminggang.com for all the latest in gaming news reviews comics movies tv you know the drill get your geek on at the gaminggang.com everybody enjoy your tuesday evening those of you who are in chat Thank you so much for hanging out and keeping me company. And I'm glad I'm I'm actually uh, sitting there with the browser on YouTube so I can see people really are in chat. <laughs> so <laughs> rather than it's like, wow, where is everybody? What's going on? I've got to talk to myself here. Yeah. So, uh, of course, if you watched live and didn't jump in a chat, how come? Come on, we're pretty friendly. We don't bite. And of course... Everyone who watches the video after the fact, I love you all as well. So enjoy your Tuesday night. I will be back tomorrow for War Game Wednesday. And until then, everybody take care. Thanks again for watching The Daily Dope, presented by The Gaming Gang. If you like this episode, be sure to give it a quick thumbs up. And if you dig the channel, please subscribe. If you'd like to check out our previous episode, click right here. And if you want to check out a somewhat randomly selected episode, give a click right down here. It'll be like opening a box of Cracker Jacks. You just don't know what you'll get. Once again, thanks for watching, and I'm Jeff McAleer.